It has been a whirlwind for LSU fans over the last two years. At the end of 2019, you guys were celebrating an undefeated season in which Joe Burrow won the Heisman, Jamar Chase won the Bletnikoff, and you guys won a national title. Two years later though, it looks like Coach O is pretty much done, and he's likely going to get fired. Not only that, but the team has been extremely disappointing, and now, you guys are missing all your best players. In today's video, I want to discuss the dysfunction that has gone on with LSU football over the last two years, more specifically this year, all the stars that are out right now due to injury, and what I think is going to happen moving forward for LSU, and what is going on with this team. But before we get started with today's video, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed for the upcoming college football season. We definitely need to do better than that, so be sure to hit that button, smash that like button for the algorithm, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's talk about the injury curse and the problems that have plagued LSU football. Mind-boggling what has happened to LSU in terms of injuries as they have lost their top four guys. The first one was Miles Brennan as their star quarterback apparently got in a fishing accident over the summer and he is now done for the season and had to have surgery. Maybe it's not that big of a deal because Max Johnson has stepped up, but Brennan was QB1 going into the year and this was difficult for them. Next, they got another piece of unfortunate news. Their All-American corner, who's likely going to be a top five pick, Derek Stingley, has not played too well this year. He ended up getting hurt and he elected to have surgery and will miss the remainder of the season. That killed the secondary, but at least you had Eli Ricks, right? Well, Ricks was a third team All-American last year and one of the top defensive backs in all of college football. He's played pretty solid this year, but now he's done. It was announced today that he'll be having surgery and his year is likely over as well. The secondary is completely chewed up, but at least you have your All-American wide receiver, right? Kayshawn Butte has been incredible for LSU this year, and he's likely going to be a top five to top 10 pick in 2023. He's literally a superstar in the making, has been the bright spot of this team, and was my favorite player on the roster. Well, Butte is now done for the year as well. So right now you're missing your top wide receiver, your starting quarterback, and your two All-American defensive backs. Add in the fact that LSU was already struggling and their schedule is extremely difficult, this is a recipe for disaster. But with that being said, it's not just those four guys that have made this season bad, so now we're going to go back and examine what has gone wrong for LSU. Going into 2021, LSU was picked to be a pretty solid team. They started out the year ranked number 16, and they would have a road matchup against UCLA. UCLA has struggled the last few years under Chip Kelly, but this team seemingly was going to put it all together and at least give the Tigers a fight. That's what I thought. I picked UCLA to win this game in my preview, and you won't believe the amount of crap I got for doing that. Well, it turns out I was right, as UCLA beat the Tigers 38-27, and that already put the LSU season off to a bad start. From there, the Tigers would come home and play against McNeese State, where fun fact Coach Orgeron's son was the quarterback for, and LSU won 34-7. It didn't do a whole lot to make LSU fans feel any better, and neither did the 49-21 win over Central Michigan. Their first SEC game came on the road against Mississippi State, and while the Tigers did pretty much dominate most of that game, the Rebels would make a late comeback, and they could not get the onside kick, and LSU would survive 28-25. Then, things started to get difficult. Number 22, Auburn came to town, and for the first time in over 20 years, the Tigers came into Baton Rouge and Death Valley and won 24-19. Bo Nix had one of the best games he's ever played, and LSU could not get anything going. This was a brutal loss, and it really turned on the heat for Coach O. It was tough, but they would have a chance to potentially redeem themselves. They were to go on the road to play number 16, Kentucky, who was one of the Cinderella teams and breakout teams in the SEC this year. The Wildcats were undefeated and ranked number 16 in the country, and they pushed around LSU. They dominated both lines of scrimmage as the Wildcats won 42-21, and LSU is now 3-3. Three three. When you take a look at the schedule, it's hard to find a route to bowl eligibility, and it's hard to find many wins. This weekend, they will play against number 20, Florida, and I don't think there's any way they win this game. The Gators are pretty solid, and LSU is so incredibly beat up. After that, you go on the road to Ole Miss, who is one of the toughest offenses in the country, and in my opinion, is the second best team in the West. After that, you get to go on the road to Alabama, where they will likely push you around and win that game easily. Arkansas is not going to be easy either, as this is not the Chad Morris era anymore. Led by KJ Jefferson, Traylon Burks, and Traylon Smith, the Razorbacks have been spectacular on both offense and defense, and while I could see LSU winning this game, I think Arkansas is the better team right now. You will get a win against Louisiana Monroe, and if they don't, 
I think you should burn the place down. Finally, you get to come home to play Texas A&M. And while a week ago, I would have said the Aggies could be a win for you, A&M put it together this past weekend and upset Bama. So right now, they're back in the thick of it in the SEC West, and I think the Aggies would win. Worst case scenario, you win four games, and maybe best case scenario, you win six. In my eyes, you're gonna end up winning five, and you're either gonna be Arkansas or A&M. This is not good for Coach O, as he pretty much knows that he's done, and all the love for him is pretty much gone. So, what exactly has gone wrong for LSU this year? Let's take a deep dive. I wanna quickly go through the stats so far for LSU. In terms of quarterback play, they've done pretty solid. Max Johnson has passed for 1,730 yards, which is top 15 in the country, and his 17 touchdowns is tied for seventh in the country. Max Johnson is not the problem. The running game has been terrible. Losing Bradford to Oklahoma and Chris Curry to Utah definitely hurt them a bit, as Tyreon Davis Price was supposed to step up and be the main back. So far, he's ran for 287 yards and two touchdowns, and usually LSU has premier backs, but this guy is not ranked very high. Behind that, you have Corey Kiner, Armani Goodwin, and Josh Williams, and neither of them have really shown a whole lot of flash. The team has four rushing touchdowns on the entire year, and for a program that is built upon that, that is absolutely pathetic, and that is the main reason why I think LSU has struggled so much. In the last few years, think about some of the running backs they've had. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Nick Brosett, Darius Geist, Leonard Fournette, Alfred Blue, and there's even more. I can't even remember them all. In terms of the receiving game, they've had some guys step up. Seven guys have caught over 100 yards worth of passes, and seven players have caught touchdown. The best player so far has been Kayshawn Butte, as he has 38 catches for 509 yards and nine touchdowns, and I believed he was going to be a first-team All-SEC selection and a potential first-team All-American if he kept this work up. Unfortunately, he is now done for the year, so the Tigers are going to look to younger players such as Brian Thomas, Deion Smith, Dre Jenkins, and Malik Neighbors. One of these guys is going to have to step up and start making plays, or they might not win another game. On defense, Damon Clark has broke out of the linebacker spot as he's one of the top tacklers in the country. Unfortunately, you've now lost Eli Ricks and Derek Stingley, and guys just need to step up as the recruiting talent is obviously there. I don't really have stats to back it up, but I personally don't think that Ed Orgeron is as good of a coach as he was made out to be, and I think a lot of his coordinators did the work for him. When you take a look at that 2019 team, you had Joe Brady, who was apparently a young, brilliant mind in the game of football, and he was so good that he was taken up by the NFL. I think he really helped that quarterback play in offense. Then when you look at that defense, they were really good back in the day as well. And who was the guy leading the charge there? Dave Aranda. Dave Aranda took the head coaching job at Baylor, and so far he has brought that struggling program to relevance as they've been ranked this year, and they only have one loss. I think Aranda and Brady really hit a lot of the flaws of Coach O, and as we saw last year, the defense was absolutely terrible under Bo Pelini, and the offense really wasn't there either. The talent is obviously there, as LSU signs a top 10 class every single year, they have grade A facilities, an amazing fan base, and a culture of winning, but I think it's time for Coach Orgeron to go. LSU football has not been the same since 2019, and a lot of people saw it coming. Les Miles and Orgeron are both decent coaches, but they're not the kind of guys who are going to keep LSU in constant playoff contention, and I think a change is needed, and I think a change is going to happen. Personally, the coach I would hire is Billy Napier from Louisiana, as he is familiar with the area. He is a coaching prodigy right now, and he has seen nothing but success everywhere he has gone. But I don't know. What do you guys think? If you're an LSU fan, what has gone wrong for you guys so far this year? What's it going to take for things to turn back around? In what direction should the LSU program head in next? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section. Hit that like button if you want to support today's video. Let me know a topic I can do next. Subscribe and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.